Let's give him all the glory. Let's appreciate him. Let's worship him for today's meeting because he has not called us to seek him in vain. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. 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 Jesus will honor you. Jesus will worship 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 you. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God, for what you're doing. Thank you, O God, for what you're doing. Thank you, O God, for what you're doing. I don't want to labor. The Bible says, when the iron is blunt, then you put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom is profitable to direct. I don't want to label the labor of fools. I don't want to label as a fool. I don't want to label as a fool. Oh God, I have come to this meeting. Let my eyes be opened. Let me see. Let me understand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. So, as I said last week, um, the, the, the meeting is going to continue every um, Saturday. Um, feel free, if you've got a quiet place, you can unmute yourself and pray aloud. Pray aloud. This is the meeting where we pray aloud. Um, it's not just um, a place where... It's not just a place where we um, um, just speak quietly. Unmute yourself and feel free to pray aloud. So... We thank the Lord for um, this meeting and what he's doing and what he wants to do. We are really believing God that we will see his hand in such a mighty way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So today we're going to be looking at um, what I said we're going to deal with last week. That will form the basis of what we're going to start with. In the book of Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1, Zechariah chapter 1, if you've got your Bible, you can open it, if you haven't got, I'll just read it from here, Zechariah chapter 1, I read verse um, 17, which was what we dealt with last week, it says, cry yet, say, thus saith the Lord of hosts, my city's true prosperity shall yet spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. You can put your name there. And shall yet choose Jerusalem. Verse 18 is very, very instructive. To let us know that the devil is just not going to sit down and, and, and fold his hands. And watch the city spread abroad. If you've got a great destiny. If you've got a great future. The devil is not just going to sit down and, and, and watch you achieve that great destiny so you've got the mountain in front of you which we're still going to deal with today um, and then we've got this other other one it says verse 18 then i then lifted i up my eyes and saw and behold four horns very strategic in the number four horns the north the south the east and the west. The devil does not leave any territory vacant. There is no territory upon the earth that is vacant. There is no territory that you want to go to. There is no vacuum. There is no thought that you want to have that someone else somewhere across the globe as in thought of so you want to accomplish greatness in your life that particular sphere you're going to there is a horn there it says i lifted up my eyes before the prophetic words the horns were not visible 
before the prophetic pronunciation, his eyes was not opened to see the horns. But as soon as the word of the Lord came forth, that through prosperity, the city would expand and enlarge, the horns begin to show themselves. You find that in your life, that before the word of the Lord has come to you, there are certain kinds of dreams you will not have. There are certain kinds of visions you will not have. There are certain kinds of resistance you will not have. There are certain kinds of opposition that you will not have. But as soon as the word of the Lord comes, you find certain resistance. And if in your case, it is one horn, maybe you can rejoice. But we look at Jerusalem here. Not one, not two, not three, four horns. I don't know how many horns are facing you. How many horns have stood up against your life that you have to contend with? There is no room for self-pity. There is no room for crying. You have to contend. He says, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be this? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. They are not there for decoration. They are there for oppression. They are there to scatter. So if you see the horns in your life, you say, oh, it's so beautiful horns. In fact, they were so beautiful, I love them. No, they are there to scatter. These are the homes that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Their jurisdiction was well defined. They scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. They didn't scatter Egypt. They didn't scatter Syria. They didn't scatter Damascus. No. No. The homes were particularly directed to a geographical location. So you can see someone who is your neighbor in the same area, in the same place of work, you're doing the same thing, you studied the same course, and they're not having opposition because the homes are not for them. If the horns are for you, you have to face yours. If the horns are on an assignment to scatter your life, then you have to face it. These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Hallelujah to the Lord God. Hallelujah to the Lord God that the vision did not stop at seeing the horns. Hallelujah to the Lord God. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. I don't care how powerful the devil may be. I don't care how big and mighty the horns may be. There are spiritual carpenters to deal with them. Only what you need to do is to engage the oppression. For you to engage the oppression of the carpenters. And he showed me four carpenters. Thank you, Jesus. For four homes, he did not bring one carpenter. For four homes, he did not bring three carpenters. We would have said, our Lord, you are inadequate. We have four homes here. You're bringing three carpenters. What's the meaning of this? One carpenter for one home. He showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? And he speaks saying, the Lord is giving more insight. Now these are the homes which have scattered Judah. 
lest you misunderstand what it means, is explaining further, so that no man did lift up his head. If you look at your lineage, if the Lord by mercy opens up the scroll before you and you begin to look, whose head has been lifted? And I am not saying by a standard of mediocrity. I'm talking about by a standard of success. By a standard of success, whose head has been lifted? The horns have scattered Judah so that no man will lift up his head. He says, but these are come to free them, hallelujah, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. You see that the word scatter, 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 scatter keeps repeating itself in just these three or four verses. The horns, as I said, for those who are just joining, are not for decoration. The horns are there to scatter. The question now is this. How many horns have you got against you? That's the reason we were singing that song or praying that song for those who joined us earlier. Show me things that are hidden. Open the eyes of my understanding for me to see, to know. See, I am trusting God by his mercy to open our eyes to see. There are things that are hidden. I remember I will be sharing as time goes on in bits and pieces some of these experiences and encounters I've had. I remember a day I was praying while on campus. And I began to pray and suddenly the Lord just opened my eyes and then I saw this personality, a human being, huge, tall, putting on naval uniform but he was lying in the dust, putting on naval uniform, but lying in the dust. And as soon as I began to pray, he stood up out of the dust. And I'm like, God, what is this? He said, this is what your prayer has done. Your prayer has triggered, awoken, certain resistance, certain principalities, certain forces. What are we going to do? You have to contend. It's not a cause of fear, but it's a cause for you to know that when you pray up to a particular point, your eyes will be opened, you begin to see the horns. What are the horns that have scattered your life? scattered your family, scattered your destiny, scattered your future, scattered your ambition, scattered your focus, scattered goals given, goals, dreams, passion. What are the horns that have scattered them? I'm praying to God today that our eyes will be opened that as it were, scales will fall off, that the Spirit of the Lord will, 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 will quicken us, even if you have seen in a great measure, there are still more to see. There are still greater realms to see. Very quickly, I will look at a passage of the scripture, which I found, and it, it, it was, it was um, quite instructive. In the book of Nahum, Nahum, Nahum is just before Abacock, Nahum chapter 2, and, Abba, and Nahum is after Micah. 
Nahum chapter 2, verse 1. What two did the carpenters bring by the privilege of God's Spirit are made to understand that the two they bring is the hammer? The hammer. It is by reason of the hammer that the, that the the, the horns will be removed. And by God's Spirit, I'm also made to understand that the horns are not just going to be caught. They are going to be uprooted. Uprooted from the root. Uprooted from the root. Nahum chapter 2, verse 1. He that dasheth in pieces. If you look at the Real translation, it says the hammer that dashes in pieces is come up before thy face. Keep the munition, watch the way, make thy loins strong, fortify thy power mightily. This just shows the extent of warfare that is involved in dealing with the armor and um, uh, with the homes. In dealing with the homes, this is the extent of warfare that is involved. This is the extent of warfare that is involved. As we pray, we we'll look at Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. I don't care the dimensions of horns in your life. This is the armor that will break in pieces those horns. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. It says, it's not my word like fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that break it, the rocks in pieces. It's not my word, the word of the Lord. It says, so shall my word be. That has gone forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void, but it will perform that which I have proposed it to do. The horns of darkness are the ones who have come against today. We want to begin to worship God because of the revelation of his word. Because today we believe in God by his spirit that the horns of hell, the horns that have come to scatter our lives, the horns that have come to scatter our destiny, the horns that have come to scatter our rising, the horns that have come to scatter our glory, that they are going to be uprooted, that they are going to be uprooted. Give God praise, give God praise. I've told you before, it's not going to be much of talking. We're going to spend time praying. We're going to spend time praying. That is the purpose of the meeting. It's called Believer's Prayer Meeting. We're going to spend time praying, really praying and seeking the face of God. God, we thank you because of your word, because we're going to, by the spirit of God, deal with the homes that have troubled me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You want to pray and tell God, open my eyes to see. Open the eyes of my understanding to see. I want to see the homes. I want to know the homes. I want to know the operations of the homes. I want to see the operations of the homes.
What are they doing in my life that is hidden for me? What are they doing in my destiny that is hidden for me? What are their homes on assignment for? Where are their operations directed in my life? Sometimes it's just directed at one aspect of your life. So every other aspect is working well, but that particular aspect doesn't work well. You know there is the operation of the home in that aspect. Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my understanding. Open my understanding. The prophetic word of God has gone over my life that by prosperity the, the, the cities will be spread abroad. That by prosperity the cities will be spread abroad. But the homes have come to challenge that prophecy. The homes have come to challenge the prophecy of God over your life. The homes have come to challenge the prophecy of God over your life. The homes have come to challenge the fulfillment of that word. Paul the apostle was telling Timothy, he said, my son, I need you to war a good warfare according to the prophecies that have gone before on thee. There are prophecies that have gone before on thee that by then you might war a good warfare. What are the prophecies that have gone before over your life? What are the prophecies? What are the things that God has said he's going to do over your life? And the homes have stood in the way. What are these homes, oh God? Who are these homes, oh God? Are they human beings? Are they, are they policies? Are they personalities? Are they territories? Who are the homes? What are the homes that have stood in my way? I want to know them. I want to see them. I want to understand their operations. I want to, I want to know what they're doing. I said, these are the homes that have scattered you down. Look at your life. Is your life looking like it is scattered? Is your life looking like it is scattered? What are the homes that have scattered this life? What are the homes that have scattered the fulfillment of the promise? What are the homes that have scattered the fulfillment of the promise? What are the homes that have scattered the manifestation of the promise? Oh, my Father, this is the time. This is the time for you to pray. I need to know these ones. I need to see these ones. I need to understand these ones. I need to know their operations. What are these ones doing in my life? What have they done in my life? What are the opportunities that are seen by you? And you thought it's just coincidence. I'm here to tell you that it's not by coincidence. There are ones that have scattered that, 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 that promise. There are ones that have scattered the fulfillment of that promise. There are ones um, Homes, 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 real homes. Homes are talking about powers. Homes are talking about thrones. Homes are talking about principalities. Homes are talking about people. Homes are talking about kingdoms, kingdoms, kingdoms. He said, for those who walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty true God. To the pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds like homes that have stood in the way? What are these strongholds like homes that have stood in the way? What are these strongholds like homes that have resisted? That have resisted? That have resisted the manifestation of the word of the Lord over your life? What are these strongholds like homes that have resisted the fulfillment of the promise of God over your life? This is the time for you to seek the face of the Lord. He says, and give him no rest um, until he make Jerusalem a praise. Um, and give him no rest um, until he make you a praise in the head. Um, these are the homes of hell. Um, these are the homes from the Father's house. Um, these are foundational homes. Um, these are the homes that sponsor the mountains. These are the homes that sponsor the mountains. Um, these are the homes that sponsor the mountains. Um, they are the ones we have to deal with. Um, I don't want to labor like a fool. Um, I don't want to expect spend all my life on useless labor. I don't want to expend all my life on hard labor. I don't want to expend all my life on labor that does not bring reward. Oh God, what are the homes in my life? What are the homes in my life that needs to be dealt with? What are the homes in my life that needs to be dealt with? What are the homes in my life that needs to be dealt with? What are the homes in my life that needs to be dealt with? Let them be dealt with. Let them be dealt with in the name of Jesus. 
Open your mouth and pray. 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 This is the time. This is the season. This is the season of God exposing. This is the season where God is exposing the homes of witchcraft, the homes of hell. The Lord is exposing the homes of territorial forces. The Lord is exposing the homes of, 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 of foundations. The homes, the homes that have scattered Judah. The homes that have scattered Israel, the homes that have scattered Jerusalem, so that no man did lift up his head, so that no man did lift up his head, so that no man did lift up his head, so that no man did lift up his head. Up his head. Let those homes be exposed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, then we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope we are praying. It says, and then I saw, hallelujah, four carpenters. Four carpenters. Enough and adequate to deal with the homes. Don't rejoice, my brother or sister, when one carpenter shows up. How many homes have you got in your life? And you're sharing testimony because one carpenter showed up. How many homes? If you've got 20 homes and five carpenters showed up, is it enough to address the homes? The equivalent number of carpenters to deal with the homes. Four homes, four carpenters. And then I saw we are the carpenters, oh God, to deal with these homes in my life. Ah, my father, we are the carpenters, oh God, to deal with these homes in my life. The servant of Elisha cried, It's your last, my master. What shall we do? The army of Syria. Has come. Let me tell you, our God always matches the enemy head to head, toe to toe. He couldn't see it, but the prophet saw it. He said, Lord, open the eyes of the young man. Ah, will you not open my eyes, O God? Will you not open my eyes, O God? Will you not open my eyes, O God? The Bible says in that instance, his eyes was opened. And he saw the mountains filled with chariots and horses of fire round about Elisha. Will you not open my eyes, O God, to see the carpenters? Will you not open my eyes, O God, to see the carpenters? Will you not? Op- I don't want to be seen only the homes. I don't want to be seen only the homes. I want to see the carpenters. 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 I want to see the horsemen, the, 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 the strategy, the, 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 the allocation for my deliverance. I want to see it, oh God. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. From a destruction of dry. Sort of that in the mm-hmm. end, the result of what Father would come and be expecting. Pure Father, that there will be deliverance. Every such destruction, revelation, every such effort by the detractors, Lord of Heaven, we pray that they will be repaired. We understand that you are the one who gives the restorative power to your children. We understand the fact that we're doing it on the reparative process. We are the one who infuses the fresh life. I want to see the carpenters. Mighty Father in heaven. I want to see the carpenters. The strength will brood over us. I want to see the carpenters that surround my life. 
I want to see the carpenters that surround my life. I want to see the source of my deliverance. I want to see the source of my freedom. I don't just want to see the homes. I want to see the carpenters. I want to see the carpenters so good. I want to see the carpenters so good. I want to see the capital so God. Oh, my Father, we told it not for me, oh God. Let the carpenters appear. 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 Heavenly carpenters. In Jesus, then we pray. My Father. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of Ezekiel, <laughs> chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9. When there is a clarion call in the spirit, and spiritual beings appear, they don't come empty. The Lord made me to understand the carpenters came with hammer. And the hammer is the word of the Lord that dashes in pieces the rocks and the horns. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 1. He cried. Here we go to what we we're saying last week. You have to cry. If you dare, you, you can't cry. There are certain realms that can't open. You have to cry. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw nigh. Every man with his what? Destroying weapon in his hand. They're not going to come empty. They're not going to come empty. When spiritual beings appear at the decree of God. So when you see in that passage that the carpenter showed up. No, they didn't come empty and dead. There is a destroying weapon in their hand. It says, and behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lied towards the north. Every man, a what? A slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink on by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. See, I tell you, there, I wish we could go on and on. See, if you leave me with these scriptures, hours and hours and hours we're still here. The altar, the brazen altar, is the place of transaction, spiritual transaction. Why did they come and stand by the altar? When the angel will appear to Zachariah, he stood this on the right hand of the altar. God is the God who has shown us light. He said, bind the sacrifice with cones to the horns of the altar. The altar, he said, has horns. So, when the carpenter shows up, they come with their destroying weapon. Every man, he said, with a slaughter weapon in his hand. These are the horns that have scattered Judah. What are the horns in my life that have scattered everything so that no man can lift his head up? The more I try to lift my head, the more they press it down. The more I try to, to make giant strides, giant strides in destiny, the more they press it down, the more I fail, the more there is a disappointment. The more there is a failure, 
Let the operation of the carpenters begin now. Let the operation of the heavenly carpenters begin now. Let them begin to walk. Let them begin to walk. Walk in my life. Walk in my life. Walk in my destiny. Walk in my life. Walk in my destiny. Walk in my life. Walk in my destiny. In the name of Jesus. 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 Let the carpenters begin to walk. Let the carpenters begin yes. to approach, approach the horns, approach the horns. Let the horns be plucked up by the root. Let the horns be plucked up by the root. Let the horns be plucked up by the root. Let the horns be plucked up by the root. Let the horns be plucked up by the root. The horns that have scattered my life, the horns that have scattered my destiny, the horns that have scattered the works of my hand, the horns that have scattered my vision, the horns that have scattered my future, the horns that have scattered my glory, the horns that have scattered my advancement. Let those horns be uprooted. Let those horns be uprooted. Let those horns be uprooted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let those horns be uprooted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let those horns be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. Let the hammer of the word of the Lord come against the horns. Let the hammer of the word of the Lord come against the horns. Let the hammer of the word of the Lord come against the horns. I hope you are praying. I sincerely hope you are praying because this season is a season where the Lord is doing things in the lives of people. This season is a season where the Lord is intentional about destroying the oppressions of the horns. This season is a season where the Lord is intentional of breaking and uprooting what has scattered the lives of people, what has scattered the destinies of people, what has scattered the glories of people, what has scattered the manifestation of people. You see yourself, you know that there is more to this. You know that there is more to this. This can be it. This can be it. God is so much bigger than this. God is so much bigger than this. You are so much bigger than this. You are so so much bigger than this. You're so much bigger than this. This can't be all of you. This can't be all of you. What are these horns doing? This can't be all of you. What are the horns doing in your life? What are the horns doing in your destiny? What are the horns doing in your future? What are the horns doing in this area of your life? What are the horns doing? What are the horns doing? This can't be it. God is so much. God is so much bigger. God is so much bigger. The thoughts that I have for you a thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. A thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Let those horns be uprooted. 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 Let the horns be rooted out. 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 Let the horns be rooted. Let the horns be uprooted. Let the horns be uprooted. Let the horns be uprooted. The horns have scattered. Oh, my father. It says I will not let you go. I set your blessing. This is the time for you to cry. 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 Don't let the angel go. Don't let the angel stand in before you go. Don't let the angel stand in before you go. Oh, lay hold on the angel. Lay hold on the angel. And wrestle with God. He say fought with God. He wrestle with God. For as a prince, as no power. With God and with man, and you are prevailed. Let there be a change of name. Wrestle with the angel. Wrestle with the angel. Wrestle with the angel. Rest with the angel. Let us homes. Let us homes be uprooted. Let us homes be uprooted. Let us homes be uprooted. 
uprooted. Let his homes be 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 uprooted. Heavenly carpenters, go right to where they are. Go right to where they are. And let the homes be uprooted. 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 In the name of Jesus. Comfort a lot of people's minds as working with this one. Wish I wouldn't be that grateful for our mind now. He says he shall not return unto me evil. Lord Father, I thank you for helping me with a breakthrough of wisdom so that we are ready for the process for your glory to fall. According as your word says in Isaiah 61, it says, Arise and shine. The point of arising is an increase in complexity. That's our let the home of heaven we pray. That you will yeah. let these ideas gain a configuration in our brains so that we can bring them to pass. It's not just going to be where we fold our arms and wait for prophecies to come to pass. There will now be the messengers who bring to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord Father, that you will help us to work as a messenger who will bring in your way to pass on earth as it then is. Pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to go a step further by the Spirit of God. He say, measure the hundred cubits. It go to my ankle. Measure again, it go to the knee. We're going knee deep. We're going knee deep. There's still greater levels. We're going knee deep. I told you in the inception of this meeting that we are God's ambassadors. We are God's battle out. What are their homes over territories? We have to step out as the church of the living God from this myopic view of me, me, me. To begin to address the homes over territories. Lives are taken into captivity by the oppressions of these homes. If you look at this man of God here, Zachariah, God did not show him that vision for himself. God didn't say these homes are in your life. He says they are over Judah. Woe be unto those who live in Judah when these horns are in operation. You can say, no, there's no horn in my life. But if the horn is over your city, it will affect you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for they shall prosper that dwell there. If there are horns over Nigeria, it will affect everyone. There are visa bans and smeared reputation. When you go to certain quarters, when you go to certain quarters, it's not because you sinned. It's because the homes in oppression have transferred the outcome to you. Yeah. So if we fail as a church, if we fail as a people to address the homes of our territories, when they take effect, we will be affected. So when I see people, I say, why are you carrying Nigeria matter on your head? Why are you carrying the case of US on your head? Why are you carrying, you're reading about what is going on in Sri Lanka, what is going on in Pakistan, what is going on in Southern Sudan, what is going on in, in Guinea, what is going on? What's your problem? My dear, if those homes are in operation, 
if that is where God has destined you to go and operate, you will be affected. So the Church of Jesus Christ is mostly focused, unfortunately, on me. And they fail to see that there are whole sovereign nations that must be uprooted. The carpenters will only walk to the level at which our mind can conceive that they can walk. The carpenters are not weak. They are strong enough to pull down their own over nations. The carpenters, as a matter of fact, they are underutilized, waiting for us to pray. We want to decree. What are the homes over territories? I will say this way. Who are the homes over territories? By the grace of God in this week, the things the Lord has revealed to me are really mind-blowing. But the focus of this meeting is prayer. So I want us to pray. Who are the homes over territories? That have scattered the head of people being lifted. Some people are not careful enough to ensure that the heads of people are lifted. But I was saying recently that if the head of everyone is lifted, there would be a baseline security. The envy, the jealousy we see in the church. Is because the prayer of Moses has not been fully answered. Would to God that all his people were prophets and that he will pour out his spirit upon everybody. In the day of Pentecost, there was no worker, there was no member. The baptism of the Holy Ghost came upon everybody. But when you have just few people, this one is a billionaire. This one is a spiritual giant. This one is a, and then 90% are in squalor. There's no security. There's no freedom. What are the ones over territories? I will leave that to you to, to battle with as you battle with the first prayer. Because I tell you, this meeting. It's, it's just to awaken our spirit. This is not the real meeting. I'm believing God by the grace of God who would, as God helps us to grow, we can have longer time where you know it's fight to finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fight to finish. The ones over territories. You're walking in a place. There are homes there. Your environment, there are homes there. If you see the prevalence, if you see the prevalence of a certain type of crime within your territory, know that there are homes. And you need to wrestle and uproot by the power of the Spirit those homes. I pray the Lord will strengthen us. I pray the Lord will strengthen us. I pray so much for you. I pray so much for you that the Lord will strengthen you to be able to address these things. Because I tell you the truth. If you don't address them, they ain't going nowhere. They're going to remain there. Time will not deal with it. Wishing will not deal with it. We have to address it. God help us. One other thing I wanted us to address today. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 1. We've got just a few moments left. Since I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me. Ah, and what I shall answer when I am approved. 
the Lord made me to understand. He wants to raise up watchmen. If you are happy, you can sign in God's holy book. Where he says, say not before the angel, it was an error. Don't sign in error. Wherefore shall he destroy the work of your hand? God is looking for watchmen. I have signed that book long ago. And I renew my signature from time to time. Watchmen that will stand over territories. Watchmen that will hold the purposes of God over the nations. Watchmen that will stand and say, Maranatha, even so come Lord Jesus. Watchmen that will stand between the living and the dead and all foul oblation that the plague might stay. Watchmen that will plead over Sodom and Gomorrah. Can the Lord find you? You want to tell God, I want to be in that army. Enlist me in that army. It may be in your business as a watchman. It may be in your profession as a watchman. It may be in your own sphere. Not everybody is called to the pulpit. But we must be watchmen across the geopolitical zones, across the, 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 the territories. Professional. We must be watchmen that will shine the light of the kingdom that the devil will not have the final say in this generation. By the mercy and the privilege of God, the Lord in his eternal counsel is going to overturn the purposes of darkness before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. But you want to tell the Lord, I want to be in that army. Wake me up from my sleep. I want to be a watchman at my duty post. I want to be a watchman standing, 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 standing at my duty post. Let it be, O oh God. Let it be, O oh God. Find us worthy. Find us faithful. Find us worthy. Find us faithful. Find us worthy. Find us faithful. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus, name we pray. I pray over you. By the power of the Spirit of God. That as we go into this week. We we'll go in victorious. I pray, O oh God. That the horns of hell. The horns that are on assignment to scatter our Judah, to scatter our praise, to scatter our peace, to scatter our, our, our success, the homes that have been oppressed or operating unhindered, heavenly carpenters get to operation and let them be uprooted in the name of Jesus. We receive strength in the Spirit. We receive victory in the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be opened. Let the heavens be opened. Let the heavens be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Begin to worship 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 God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you because the homes have proved it. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm going to see the manifestation in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus, then we pray. Amen. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. Blessed be your name forever and ever. We give you praise, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, your angels will get into oppression and we will see your mighty hand in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Father, because it is done. In Amen. Jesus, then we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much um, for coming. I appreciate every one of you for taking our time to come. Um, it's a privilege to have this period of prayer. And um, I just want to charge our hearts that we um, take it very seriously. You see, there, there are times when the Lord is moving like this. The Lord doesn't always move like this at every time. And if the cloud does settle down within this time, I want us to take advantage of it and and do everything possible to gather. Bible says the hands gather it and meet in the summer. To gather as much as possible because seasons are going to change. Seasons are going to change. The Lord is really moving. I can see the hand of God. Um, seasons are going to change. By the grace of God, next week, one of the issues the Lord made me to understand during the week was that not every mountain you're going to cry against. It's a mountain you have to climb. So we're still going to be dealing with these two issues, the mountains and the horns. But I want to charge your spirit that during the week, you pray this until it becomes real in your spirit. And I trust the Lord, it will do one.